Uh, this is as good a time as any because he didn't write any songs with me um, <laughs> that he knows about. Actually, he did, but he doesn't know about it. And I'm not going to explain that any further, but you can listen to the Weeklings record when it comes out. Uh, anyway, what Paul McCartney story do you want me to tell? My favorite. No, okay. Well, I, you know, I only have one. So, um, <laughs> I was lucky enough to, to meet Paul McCartney. It was a moment of a lifetime. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable magic evening, the whole, the whole event where we played out at uh, John Bon Jovi's uh, house in the Hamptons. Uh, everything about the day was letter perfect. And um, uh, the, I go through the whole the whole, the whole thing. And, you know, well, do you? Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've only told it a, a few times, but uh, so we, but anyway, we, we're out there and uh, we're doing a sound check, and uh, and John says to us, he says, well, you know, there's a chance that uh, Paul McCartney is going to come to the party tonight, and he says, yeah, right. He goes, he goes yeah, he, he's he's having some, I don't think he's going to make. He's having some trouble with his ex-wife and the kid and all that, so maybe it's like 25 percent chance. So um, we we then went out to dinner, um, and I. Um, I have dinner with Jerry Gaskill, and Jerry says, uh, well, what are we going to do if McCartney shows up? I says, well, we got to do Long Tall Sally, right? Because it's like, when, when you have someone uh, that's that famous, they typically don't want to play their own songs. They want to play a cover song, so you got to find a cover song that you think they know. And of course, we know Paul McCartney knows Long Tall Sally because it's the most amazing freaking vocal on the planet on the Beatles' second album that I, that I became a human being when I first listened to it. So, I had an extra grind. Uh, wanted him to do that song. So anyway, we, we got back to the party and we, we were playing and, and uh, people started coming up on stage. First John Bon Jovi came up on the stage and that was great. We played uh, Who Says You Can't Go Home and Governor Corzine is dancing on the dance floor. This is, didn't even have a seatbelt on. <laughs> and, uh, that was pretty cool, and uh, then Billy Joel came up uh, to sit in, and he did some Talk Women and Women's some other numbers. Wow. And, uh, and then Jimmy Buffett came up and he did some songs, and then Paul McCartney came up. And uh, John Bon Jovi turns to me and he says, uh, what are we going to play? Long Tall Sally is in my back pocket right now, you realize that. So, so I said, well, I don't know, maybe it won't do it. How about Twist and Shout? And McCartney says, I don't know the words to Twist and Shout. I'm thinking, who doesn't know the words to Twist and Shout? We all know the words to Twist and Shout. So I said, oh, okay, well, how about Long Tall Sally? He goes, oh, right, Kid G, let's play it. So we, we did, and he did, and it was, and it was incredible. And I, no, no vocal warm-up, slammed right into it. Uh, incredible, incredible story. And so we played for about an hour, and, and uh, I forget all this stuff. We played rock and music and lots of other stuff. It was great fun. And uh, then the stars left the stage, and it was up to me to entertain at that point. What are you going to do? There's only one choice, right? Play all Beatles songs, early Beatles songs for the rest of the night. It was great. Everybody loved it. Paul's out in the audience, dancing, singing along, raising his hand up, back in the U.S., back in the U.S., back. And I'm watching Paul McCartney out in the audience, dancing with somebody, going back in the U.S. I'm singing it, and I'm saying, I better not tell anybody about this, because they will not believe it. <laughs> but it's really true. And, uh, and then afterward, I got to, to meet and talk to him for a while, and we had a good time. And so that's... That's um, a large part of the poem part of the story. So.